Welcome to the Agile community and our technical tips and tricks videos. My name is Sebastian Perusa, Director of Community and Senior Engineer. Today I will guide you through the process of how to enter and use the operating system boot menu. The boot menu is one of the main components when it comes to recovering or restoring a device to factory defaults. We already have a tutorial on how to reset the factory default device from the UMS and from the operating system, so you might already have seen the boot menu there. But in general, besides the fact that you can uh, reset the device, you can also check for errors on the OS, so operating system and hardware level. So checking if some partitions or some CSC errors happened on your disk. Also, misconfigurations. If you have a script, a post-session command, or a final network command, or even a custom partition that break down your device, you have a last chance to get rid of it by going into the boot menu and changing the configurations. Last but not least, not such often used, but add also custom boot commands for supporting specific touchpads or sometimes also some specific graphic drivers where you have to add a specific boot menu. We would usually start with the Universal Management Suite, also known as UMS, but since we are looking at the boot menu of our operating system, we are starting stretch forward into the Agile OS operating platform. We have different ways and different reasons why you want to access the boot menu. One would be to check if some CSC errors are available on the disk where Agile OS is installed, or you might have a misconfiguration somewhere especially when looking at uh, custom commands and custom partitions, where you need to double check stuff and your device is not available anymore by using UMS or the graphical user interface. So assuming you can already access the device physically, you have to restore the device. During the boot up process, press escape. If you have a hypervisor, like me with VMware Workstation or ESXi, you might have the situation where the escape is already blocked by the boot menu of your hypervisor. In that case, please just go to FE1 or FE2. FE1 is usually fine. Press escape again, and now you see the boot menu of Agile OS. So basically, the quiet boot is the boot process which is started on every boot up as soon as you turn off and turn out your device. Verbos boot is instead of quiet will show you exactly which steps are fulfilled during the booter process, but you cannot interact with them. Visa only boot is meant for devices with a limited graphical processor unit support, so GPU, um, especially if you have some older hardware or extremely new GPUs. It might be a test if you device just start with a black screen to use the Visa mode. Uh, just be aware that you might have some limitations regarding the resolution and on multi-monitor support. Emergency boot is one of the stuff we will go through today. The emergency boot will open only the Agile setup and nothing else. That means that every other configuration or misconfiguration that might have reached the device is not loaded. It's really just the Agile setup. The face safe boot is what I told just at the beginning is to check your hard disk, your hard drive, your SSD, uh, to check if something went wrong uh, with files or corruptions. The reset to factory default that we already covered in another tutorial, how to reset the device to factory default from the endpoint point of view, and the custom command that if you want to start with a specific drive. So let the device start with quiet boot. So that's basically what you already know. Let's restart the device now again, but we will use the verbose boot now. So we should see a little bit more information. That's something that you might have already reached on your Ubuntu machine. If you press escape during the boot up process, you see it a bit more. By the way, that's one of the procedures I would recommend if your device is booting up quite slowly or if you have the feeling that something is not loading like expected like network etc it's a good idea to have a look into that one because it's protocolating every step and where your device is between marks losing some time during the boot up process 
So now you would have to press Ctrl Alt and F1 to going back to the graphical user interface or just pressing Ctrl Alt and F12 to move from one to the rescue chair to another. So here after logging in, you have to enter system CTL default to load the graphical user interface. And now it should switch automatically back to what you will find on Control Alt and F1 to the standard workspace with the graphical user interface. Here we go. So again, let's restart the device, go to the next boot menu. The visible only boot is not such impressive since I already have a GPU which is working but we can just show how it works. It will be exactly the same boot process. And for the same graphic user interface as usual. Like I said, you would only notice some limitations regarding multi-monitor, resolution, performance a little bit, but it's a good approach to double check something in the first step. The emergency boot was set up only now is again starting the operating system quite normally but with a limited access to the graphical user interface so you would just have access to the edges setup and that's it you don't have something else so here you could change already applied configurations that you made locally if you want to add or to remove specific part that you made in the local edges setup, you could do that easily here. As soon as you close the edges setup, the device will ask you if you want to reboot it now. So bringing it back to normal, so to say, and going back to EFI. And now going to see Feboot with CSC checks. That's, in my opinion, one of the most important boot menu options that you have, especially if you are looking at the UD pocket, which might have some issues in specific situations regarding heat, uh, if the USB port is pretty close to uh, the heating system of the, of the laptop, you might have a UD pocket which could have some, some weird issues. It's always a good idea to make the CSC check just to be sure that it's not a physical error somewhere on the disk itself. So you are seeing here that our partitions are checked, that uh, a kind of sanity check is performed on the operating system level and checking that all the keys, so the signature of our partitions, didn't went corrupted by a malicious attack or something like that. So now the boot process is more or less uh, going through the usual state, like we would see on the Verbos boot. So you have a lot of information and could check if something on the hardware level might not have been recognized like expected. But at the end, the device will boot up as usual, hopefully. So last but not least, I will go through the last boot menu, which is now the reset to factory default and custom boot command, which are pretty similar from the behavior. The reset to factory default is just booting in, going into a kind of command line where you have to double check if you want to keep some settings or, or not and if you really are sure that you want to delete all the local configurations. Here we go. So you would have to answer with yes. Just be aware that there is an American uh, keyboard layout. So now the terminal settings are reset to defaults quite slowly, but it's working. Just be patient. And just, uh, just a, s a small thing that I already mentioned in the other tutorial, uh, you have to enter the administrator password of your endpoint. So if you have defined an administrator password in security password, the administrator, then you would have to enter it before going to the factory defaults. Now going to the custom command, Nothing really highly complex to see here. It's more kind of uh, 
driver adaption that you can uh, fulfill here, especially if you think about some specific touchpads or uh, GPU stuff that you might have to do with some mod commands. That's what you will describe here. So things are that the device to factory faults, nothing really highly interesting to see. Just wanted to share uh, how to use the custom command from the KB side. So that's the part of settings you might already have done prior. And that's all I wanted to show you regarding the boot menu. Thank you for joining our technical video session. All links mentioned in this session are available in the show notes section of this video. You will find more technical content and other videos on agilecommunity.com and agileacademylearn.agile.com.